Nicholas Ruskowski, an infertility diagnosis left him feeling isolated, embarrassed, and guilt-ridden. And it was like that one certainty that was my guiding light. I'm going to be a provider for a family that's full and full of life and fun. It, that was gone, and it was, it really rocks your, it really rocks your world. But despite having almost no sperm, there's still hope for guys like Nicholas. Fertility technology is booming, offering new hope to men who dream of becoming dads one day. It is in labs like these around the world where hopes are hatched. Holding pipettes, securing in place. It's where the single biggest advancement in overcoming male infertility takes place every day. It's called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI for short. To fertilize an egg, all that's needed is one sperm. Usually, that sperm would swim against the others and penetrate the egg. But in men with fertility issues, that doesn't happen. So lab workers do it instead. Sperm is taken from the male and directly injected into a waiting egg. And even for men who don't seem to have any sperm in the semen, there may be a chance that doctors can find sperm hidden in the testicles deep inside tiny tubules. The trick? Finding it and that usually calls for surgery. This is a large tubule right here. This, this, this is, whole area? Yeah, so that's, that's, now that looks big, but if you turn a regular ultrasound, it would actually look quite small. Dr. Keith Jarvie is a urologist at Mount Sinai Hospital in Toronto. He's working on a better way to find elusive sperm. So what we're trying to do is with that ultrasound imaging, instead of opening the patient up, look with the ultrasound first, to see if we can see those larger tubes. So someone described it as like a needle in a haystack. That's what we're trying to do. The first of its kind, high-powered ultrasound, can see down to 200 microns, the width of a human hair. So how many tubules are we talking about in a testicle? Oh, you're talking of thousands and thousands of different tubules within a testicle. The bigger the tubule, the more likely there will be sperm inside. It really just looks like a snowstorm, even to the trained eye. The ultrasound is so powerful, Doctors aren't sure how to read what's on the screen just yet. While Dr. Jarvie is looking for existing sperm, fellow researchers here at Mount Sinai Hospital are hoping to reach the holy grail in male fertility research, growing sperm outside the human body. It was at the five stages. We're at about stage two right now. See that little bump? It's human testes growing on a mouse. Inside that testes are stem cells researchers are trying to coax into puberty so they become sperm cells. It's not easy. So at, in animal studies, we have been very successful. But in human, basically nobody has shown it is even possible. If one day scientists can manage to grow sperm outside the body, it could have huge implications. <laughs> Boys like this little one, could bank testicular tissue in the face of a cancer diagnosis, knowing their future fertility would be preserved. And it could give researchers a way to test the effects of drugs or chemicals on sperm growth, something they can't do now. If you think that's reaching the realm of science fiction, look at this. These aren't your average mice pups. Even though scientists have been able to create mouse sperm in a dish, no one's been able to show the sperm actually worked. Until now. Japanese researchers say these are the first animals to be created by sperm grown in a dish from embryonic stem cells. And these pups were able to grow up and have pups of their own. It seems science has no limits, and technology is outsmarting nature, fertility problems, the realm of creating human life in a lab. So problem solved, right? Not exactly. What if infertility was something more? The canary in the coal mine, as they say, a harbinger of future disease. There's something to this. You know, a man's reproductive potential is some reflection of his global health. I sometimes buy little baby things just because, I don't know, I want to give them to our baby. And I just found this little blanket and it's, feel how soft it is. I've given, I've bought a lot of stuff over the couple of years, but I usually just give it away to people who have kids. And these, these are just the cutest little, I can't bear to give these things away. Just, I just want to have them for my baby. Why have you given the other things away that you had? Oh, I guess just, it's hard to hold on to things. And I don't want to be one of those people that, you know, keeps 
<laughs> keeps a room ready for a baby when there's no baby. When David Chisholm met Carly Weiner, he knew he'd found the one. I thought we would be one of those couples where, oh, it was one in a million and we just got pregnant. We were those people, even though the doctors told us it couldn't happen. It was one in a million because David had been diagnosed with cancer as a child. It was bone lymphoma that had actually eaten um, a hole through the skull. And uh, the tumor was actually rather large, um, the size of a small lemon. He's been in remission now for years, but the chemotherapy and radiation damaged his sperm cells. What started as just a simple headache and a small bump, unfortunately, has now resulted in where I am today, which is a plate in the back of my head and um, you know, lifelong fertility issues. It's long been known cancer can rob a man of his fertility. But what if you flip that equation? What if infertility was a sign, a marker, that a man might be more likely to develop cancer? New research suggests infertility may only be the first health battle men will fight. We can say with, with absolute certainty that amongst the risk factors that we count for testis cancer, infertility is absolutely one of them. How high of a risk? Threefold. Dr. Thomas Walsh has published studies on the possible links between infertility and cancer. And testis cancer wasn't the only risk, according to a 2010 study. Specifically, those men who were infertile and had abnormal semen quality were about two and a half times more likely to develop high grade, so clinically significant prostate cancer, and that their infertility was preceding their development of prostate cancer by five to 10 years. Not only does infertility appear to increase the risk of prostate cancer, but the kind that could be deadly. It's another level at which doctors are just beginning to understand infertility and its potential consequences. We've been successfully sidestepping infertility with technology for over 30 years. Millions of children have been born, but many are surprised to find their chances of taking home a baby aren't what they thought. I think patients sometimes see what they want to see and many couples are willing to roll the dice to fulfill their dream of having a baby. Next on 16 by 9, are fertility clinics twisting the truth? According to the websites, there's currently eight number one clinics in Canada. About the real chances of getting pregnant.